Hey everybody, welcome back to Humankind. Last episode we picked a culture, uh, the Egyptians, and this episode we'll get to implement it. First we gotta move one idle army though. Um, maybe... Oh, maybe we get here. Come on, come on, come on. Nice! Okay, we got another scout. <clears throat> so that is a... That is a nice little bonus that I didn't expect to happen. Um, actually, we might... Let's kill this guy here. And uh, we'll auto-resolve this one because it does look pretty easy. And there we go. What did we get? We got 10 food. Well, that won't do much for us now because we uh, won't be able to grow this more. But... It is 10 food. Well, nothing else to say about that. Okay, so we uh, got some more movement to complete. And after that... Oh, hang on, hang on. No, okay. And after that, uh, I think these curiosities we can still get um, when we got the new era. So that's still going to provide some science output. But uh, we'll end the turn and become the Egyptian. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Yep, that pretty much does it. So now we are ancient and no more no more tribes and now we can actually build cities. Uh, we got some population on that outpost. <coughs> uh, is that finished now? It is. Okay, so now we can create a city and I do want to create one here. Oh, and we can pick our first religion already. Um, polytheism, which is um, many gods, or shamanism, which is one... Well, actually, it's also many gods, and we acknowledge this. Hmm, which one we want? Plus five faith from holy sites, which I think makes more sense to me. Are we going to go for polytheism? Worked for the Romans? Why doesn't it... shouldn't it work for us? And Memphis is our capital now <clears throat> and as we zoom out a little bit now you can see a clear blue line around the district that we own uh, while this dashed line around here is an is an outpost but this outpost can also turn into a city i'm just gonna take a couple turns but that is okay uh, we got the scouts here to protect the city and we got our first border here with our neighbors um, we might want to build another one down here or over here, we'll, we'll see. Hang on, we need to zoom in a bit. Um, can we make it through that mountain pass here? Off Let's we go. check out what's in here. Okay, so we could plunder the sanctuary, but now it's just gonna give us a little bit extra cash, which we don't really need. And I got all the information I wanted out of this move, actually, <clears throat> because now we have the coastline here and we have the coastline over here. And if there's nobody up here, which so far it doesn't look like there is, and we got cities in these three regions, we effectively block off access to all this. Well, actually not because there's a region in here. So if we got cities in these four regions, as I was saying, uh, this one here as well, and this one here, we will block off this part there for us to settle or do whatever we want to, unless we're forced to gain, uh, to give open border access to our neighbors. But I don't think anybody can force us yet. At least I didn't meet anybody impressive enough. So uh, and here also we got horses, which is a resource we need for our culture's special unit, which I'm not sure if we can build that already. No, we can't yet. Okay, we need to develop it first, but... <clears throat> we uh, we do have them available if we'll need them at some point in the game later. So let's just go around here. Okay, there's a somebody. <laughs> there's a neighbor. I'm not sure if they're friendly. 
They're certainly a bit stronger than we are, so... Well, at least at this spot they are. Now, they didn't claim the land here yet, so we might get lucky. Maybe there's a nice resource on that as well. Okay, so now we got a lot more options. Um, let's first take a look at a city. And uh, again, as last episode, I'll explain a little bit about the game mechanics and whatnot. And uh, we'll we'll slow that down as the as the playthrough progresses because yeah I'm not gonna explain every click and everything but I want to explain everything at least once so those of you who didn't play the game yet and who don't know much about it have a chance to follow along and decide and like um, judge my decisions that's what I was looking for okay before anything let's admire the beauty of that region okay now um we do have cities and uh, by the way you can make this a little bit more manageable by switching to list mode but at the start we don't have that many buildings available so we can whoops have them in item mode um yeah and uh, we could either buy out like we could switch to full buyout mode just buy out stuff here or we could switch to the production queue and uh, we are a pr industry based nation so we're gonna produce our own stuff Okay, now um, we will gain another population in three turns because, wow, we got 14 food here, okay. We got plentiful food. Uh, that's a bit of an interesting system. Um, if we are between 10 and 50, we are plentiful and we will gain, um, we'll gain population and a bit of a stability bonus. Stability is a new resource I never saw in any... Well, I saw them in the Paradox games, but they mean something different. Here it is like the stability of the city, and it goes down with districts and buildings you build. As you can see here, the Egyptian pyramids, they cost 5 stability. Uh, farmer's quarters cost stability, and so on. So that is a resource we have. And the rest is pretty much like each 4 x We have uh, our workers that we can put into various um, fields here. They can produce industry, they can produce food or science. And yeah that is that is pretty much all there is to it on that front and here we got buildings we can build units we can build and we shall start with that now i want to ramp up my production a bit and also my influence because we do need influence for further outpost building and they get more expensive the more we have i know it's horrible so uh, we need to we need to produce a little more influence and i think this egyptian pyramid is just the thing we need it does give us plus one per adjacent industry quarter so ooh, okay well now we're a little bit of a pickle we could build this here which will give us plus 15 industry which i think is what we'll do because it's just so good um, or we could build it somewhere closer to the city where we likely will build industry districts but i think we'll just take this smart because it's just it's just very good is what it is so let's build this here 15 extra industry thanks and that should give us a nice nice early game boost also it's a prominent location we'll have it here on this um, little hill there and probably after that we'll queue up okay we need an industry district here yet that is a bit problematic because if we build it here we'll gain extra industry but we'll lose this food output which is not really what i want but there's probably no way around it we could build one here and then have industry districts around this pyramid and have farming districts up here because if you look there yeah there's only food available here and close to the river so i think that's what we'll do but we'll lose two food output here um, oh well it is what it is we'll just queue that up as the next building okay and that's pretty much it for the city management there is a concept of administrators and uh, well if we take a look here we do have one administrator available currently I don't really see where we have an overview of those but believe me he's there um, and what he does do is mostly give stability uh, can we see that somewhere? Um, not really, but we will be able to see it when we have another outpost that doesn't have an administrator. They will have, I think, minus 30 from not being administered. So there's always a decision if you build a city or an outpost. Outposts can only farm 
strategic resources and stuff. So they, they are va valuable in their own right. Um, and they can be linked to these cities and you can get access to like these resources there. But they can't really build much else that I saw yet. Anyway, might be different in different areas. Okay, now we also have a tech to pick. And for the first one, uh, as you guys probably remember, we got a nice bonus on calendar. Uh, twice, 25%, so we'll have half the cost, so we'll get this done in two turns, which is pretty good. And we'll get the granary, which will boost our food production, which is also pretty good. So we'll go with that one as a start, and we'll pick it from here. But there's also just a regular old tech tree. Um, if we go to the technology screen here, and you can uh, queue up stuff like that. So we'll get the calendar, and then next we'll get carpentry, right? So first this, and then that. Um, and you can always choose like either from the drop down here or in this tech tree over there. And it's very linear for starters, but it might become more complex later on. I don't know. Looks pretty cool though. But uh, it's it's a little bit like you have to scroll through here, but the civilization does it the same, I think. So yeah, it's it works. It does work. Um, or we have this screen here that we can pick the currently available text. Okay. Calendar is going to be available next turn, and now we got some idle scouts that we can move around, and we shall do just that. Um, this guy was planned to scout. Actually, we'll just split off one. And you can scout the coastline here, see if we find another nice. No, 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 no. You, sir, oh, scout the coastline there, that's what I meant. Not gonna mess up my movement as badly again. And these guys will now go down into this valley here and maybe we'll find something else there. I'm not gonna agitate my neighbors here. Uh, as I remember that pink was this uh, very friendly Asian black mix looking lady that had a very, very friendly face. So I'm hoping that is representative of the AI's persona. So we'll have a friendly neighbor here in the corner what I think is the corner anyway, because we don't know much about the map yet. And we can trade with them and have maybe a potential ally and we'll bash on the rest over here. That is fine by me. Okay, so we got the two stack here and I don't see the brown guys anymore. But yeah, we got one here. We got a three stack up here. So we got four scouts there. I think we'll bring the three down here because there's more to be scouted there, I think. I'll just go around here and go down into this valley and go ahead and scout. Okay, we got one more idle army. That's that one, yeah. And we're gonna split these guys up. Um, one's gonna scout along the coastline. Hopefully that's gonna be sufficient. Pick you. Yeah, you just follow the river there. Over this way. And go coffee beans, cool. And we got the river delta down here. And the other one's gonna go more in towards the inner part of the land. Maybe discover this here. It's also interesting that they don't... Yeah, you can't, like in the fog of war, you can't really see the terrain um, elevation, which is a neat thing. The stuff you have discovered, you can't see it, but this here just looks plain, it could be lower or higher and just as you develop it if you can uh, check that animation out like we go here and then it folds in it's like it's it's got it gets blown up and it's deflated before it's discovered a pretty cool effect um, a pretty cool idea to not give you a hint where the coastline is what is this here though maybe there is a hint i don't know maybe it's just random clouds okay and now that we moved everybody around we get to end our turn um, let's just take a minute and look back on what we did. We did build our first city. The second one is in progress now. We could buy that out if we had money, which we don't have. Okay, so we're good on that front. Um, we have a scout here that we need to quickly move out the way. Because I don't want to lose it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Next turn we're going to look in our era. But calendar research there we go and we have one neighboring diplomacy uh, neighboring uh, what you call civilization and they are opening the channels of diplomacy cool 
Empire Unknown reached the ancient with the Babylonians. Okay, so they're science oriented. And we got a civics point, another mechanic in the game. This game gets complex quite fast. So uh, that is... For me, I like that. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it, how it handles it, how it balances it. Because that is always the big challenge. Nobody minds complex mechanics. But it's very difficult to keep them balanced. And uh, that's going to be the big challenge of this game, I feel. Because there's so much going on. But let's actually take a look at... Let's first move the scout. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, since they left us alone. Okay, we got some uh, dyes over here. And there's the next coast. <clears throat> they got stuff built here. Okay, so we could... Um, yeah, we don't want to scout there too much because they probably have their three stack lingering there and they're probably not afraid to attack us. Okay, so here's the coastline. This is an interesting region as well. Got two dyes, lots of food. Um, a bit of a bare plains here though. Mm, difficult to settle on this, but maybe later it's going to be interesting. Okay, so that is that. Now let's go into diplomacy. We can either click on this. Yeah, we'll just go here. I have some so the Hittites, they are... Hit yeah, Hittites. <laughs> High titties? I don't know. Um, you guys make your jokes about that. They are warmongers, um, but they are offering us luxury luxury trade um, privileges. And I gotta take a minute to admire this. I really love the way this is set up. It's pretty much like, like a contract that you modify. And you can pick stuff here. You can say, okay, we want... Uh, we want to trade luxuries, right? And then they have to accept, and you can bribe them and whatnot, and then they accept it. And then you can go up one more. We can trade everything, or we can reveal the capital, and we can share maps, and so on and so forth. Um, which I'm assuming there's going to be more options here, but I really love the idea, because that makes diplomacy a bit more interactive. It's not just different types of treaties, but it's like one matrix that you can choose in. Like, we want to be traders, but the rest, we close our borders, but we trade. Or we want to really be allies and yeah. So we're gonna accept this. Um just I to like keep him pleased. I agree. Like moonlight. And uh, yeah, water. just propose alliance, certainly not. We can surprise them with war, but yeah, who cares about that? If we got some like if we build close to their borders or if we attack their units or something, there's gonna be crisis events here. And uh, you can then react, demand reprimands or something like that, and re react to that crisis which is also a very cool idea i think and now we got stuff we could trade but we don't so we can't trade okay so there's that by which right or by what right do we rule now we come to the civic screen now let's show the details this here is the uh, civic screen and you have a uh, four sliders that you can move depending on how you decide um, so you got to choose between Freedom and law and order. You got to choose between, um, I think this is more religion and this is more science. You get to choose between growing wide or being more um, capital centered. And this here, I don't really know what this means. And uh, depending on how you decide and how your civics are set up, these sliders move along and, uh, as you can see, grant you different types of bonuses. So you always get a bonus of 20%. Now you can decide, do I want more industry and less money? And then you make decisions that move this slider in this direction. The other way around, it's going to be more industry. Do I want to be more centralized? Then we'll uh, move it in this direction and we'll have extra stability. Or move it in this direction, we'll have extra growth. Or we'll have a mixture of it. And so on and so forth. Pretty great system. Um, very complex though. I mean, so uh, we could either decide we're gonna rule by natural right we claim and have dominion over the land and beasts and that is it and we get extra influence which i do like or we get extra fate uh, if we say we rule by divine mandate mm. we get to stay in the middle here plus 10 signs otherwise we move out here which i think i'll pick this one 
We don't have to pick, by the way. We could just uh, close this up. We have a legitimacy that we could spend this one civics point on and say we'll uh, have customary laws or codified laws. Or we could spend it on the founding myth. Um, but I think we'll... Yeah, we'll keep this point for now. Being Egyptians, it would make sense to rule by divine mandate because the Egyptian rulers were were treated as gods, as we can see here. Um, the pharaohs were direct descendants or gods themselves, so uh, they were treated as that and probably the claim divine mandate over the land. Um, it would give us extra fate, but I would like the extra five influence, so on the main plaza. Ah, okay, now we have the the stability here. Once we pick our first civic, it's gonna show that those sliders here as well, and I'm gonna click away this tutorial. Um, Empire stability, yes, understood. There's some of these tooltips still left, but yeah. Also, you can see the influence here. You can actually take over neighbors by influencing them, which is also a very cool system and another level of complexity. Uh, this game really knows how to ramp up the, the complexity, I gotta I tell you. Okay, so uh, we gotta pick our... Yeah, we can go into here, and then let's first find our main plaza. Is that here? Main plaza plus five. It currently has three influence, so that's gonna really help us settle. Um, so I'm gonna go for that. We don't have to play the traditional Egyptians, we're just gonna go with the plus five influence. And there we go, now we got plus 10 per turn and that should help us out greatly. And then we have to close this screen. I always get messed up, press escape when I shouldn't. Okay, so now we got four idle armies that we need to move and uh, scout along the coasts. I apparently messed up because I can't move up these rocky foundations, so we'll just skirt the coast here. It's okay, they can't enter the water, but uh, man, this is beautiful. I gotta say it at least three times every time we play this game because it is just, it's just gorgeous. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Okay, let's come down into this land here a little bit and uh, see what we can see. Mm -hmm -hmm. There's a river that we can enter here, so let's do that uh, next turn. There's another offer uh, for trading luxuries and we'll certainly accept that. That is that well, she did look more friendly in the uh, opening screen. Most glorious! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Lucy is very happy. She doesn't seem... Well, she's forcing a smile there, so I'm, I'm using that as a sign of goodwill. Oh my, her mood has really changed. Okay, let's yeah. move the river a little more. Uh -huh. uh, nothing much here. Let's, go. let's move up there. Okay, now you guys uh, move down here, and there's the coastline, great. So let's just move into the forest. Oop, carpentry researched. World deed accomplished. Your initiative is leading your people to greatness. Be the first to discover Vinishuncha. What is this? A site of daily worship and offerings. The sweeping mountain range is a testament to greater forces. Interesting. Huh. Plus five influence, plus ten. Oh, okay, we want to build something here. But first we want to ransack this sanctuary. Because uh, that makes sense in front of the holy site. Nice, that is another level of complexity. So we also got the holy natural sites, plus the ones we can build. Plus I know we can build uh, wonders. So, yeah. If you want complexity, this game does deliver for sure and all in a beautiful package it's astounding how well it runs for an open beta by the way it's just i never had any problems with it whatsoever very smooth yeah no complaints on that front okay my researchers are idle uh, i should babble less play more we got the carpentry now and we could go for domestication or city defenses but i think we'll go for domestication because we want horses and horses will allow us, and after that we'll go for irrigation, yeah, because that building here gives us plus 15 stability, and we're going to definitely need that, because we'll 
have a lot of cities that don't have administrators, if I judge that correctly. Okay, this is going to be three more turns. Um, do we have more idle armies? We don't, but I certainly want to move some of my... How do I deselect this outpost? Go away. There we go. Right click. Okay. Um, I certainly want to get this region in between here. We're doing pretty damn well in terms of points. Uh, one thing I missed to explain, by the way, and then it's, that's going to be the last lecture for today, is uh, now that we entered a new era, it's not one star we need, it is seven. Right? Two, four, six, seven, yeah. Seven stars, and we can earn them in different ways. Uh, our main way, there we go, scroll backwards there for a second. Our main way of earning those is going to be uh, builder stars. And builder stars we get through owning more districts. Currently we have zero, but that number is going to change fast after we build our first district. And, uh, well, that's that's going to be our way to fame, and we gain 110 fame for that. We can also get agrarian stars by having more population. Currently we have 12. That is actually quite interesting. So we need 8 more population, which is quite doable. And then we'll get 200 fame. Pretty cool. Uh, we can get it through technologies and so on and so forth. So you're not really set on the way I picked to like the builder stars. You could do it different ways. You could build influence buildings and yeah. The combinations are endless is what I'm getting at. Uh, maybe that's why the game doesn't need endless in the title. It's just humankind because you have a zillion combinations you can do from cultures to ways you earn those stars to it's just boggling my mind. Anyway, so that's the way we get to the next era, by getting these seven stars. And also, we're gonna get to the next episode with that, because we are at the 25 minute mark, I think, roughly, and uh, this is a nice quiet point to stop and take in what we accomplished. We got a close off to the border here, so we need influence, but we're making plenty of turn. Um, we just need this region and maybe this, that would be ideal. And then we have these whole hinterlands, I think. Because I think the coast goes around here. And then this whole area is ours, if we can defend it. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm going to continue playing and uh, uploading these in the days until the 28th. And you guys hopefully keep liking, keep commenting, and uh, I'll try and answer as much as I can and uh, incorporate as much feedback as I can. Until next episode, guys, enjoy your day and uh, goodbye.